it just... It's glorious. Every time Janet Paul is in St. Gregory the Great Church, she finds something new to look at. Her parish, one of the only Catholic landmarks in the Diocese of Brooklyn. This was an enclave so that the wealthy possibly didn't have to go to church with the ordinary. That was 100 years ago. Now the lights have dimmed, but the grandeur still rests in the shadows. The church was designed by two of Brooklyn's most prominent architects, Helm and Corbett. They received directions from the church's pastor, who had traveled to Italy for inspiration. So he informed the architects about what he liked and what he thought would be great, and he obviously had a good eye. The building was modeled on Rome's oldest basilicas. The outside features an open structure with ionic columns and a seven-story campanile, or bell tower. Masterpiece, an artistic masterpiece. Most captivating to Janet are the paintings done in the same style as Michelangelo. First class art. And these rafters, you won't see them in most places. One, it's, um, the timbers are special. Two, it's not an easy architectural feat to put them up like that. And three, it's a stroke of genius. On Sunday, the parish, now mainly a population from the West Indies, will celebrate the first mass ever offered a century ago in this church. But in its rich history, Janet tells me, there was a link to the future. There was a, a Jesuit. Um, John Collins, John J. Collins. He was bishop on the Caribbean island of Jamaica. When St. Gregory's was dedicated, he sent his friend, the then Bishop of Brooklyn, Charles McDonnell, a flag from the island, to celebrate what was the grandest church in the diocese. Maybe it was a foreshadowing of who the residents would become in this area. For Currents, I'm Michelle Powers.